On this episode of Not Rod, we actually fail. We climb to the mountaintop of excitement only to fall very abruptly into the valley of despair. Let the disappointment begin. So here we are once again, one week away from the last test and tune of the year. And we've been really anxious to get the Nova back out with a new set of lower gears to see what it can really do on the track. So I picked up a new rear axle for it. It actually has the same gears in it that the Nova already has. So I picked up a gear set for it. We're gonna put 411s in it. And I figured it wouldn't hurt to have a spare rear end laying around anyway. It's an eight and a half inch 10 bolt, which is the same thing that's in this Nova already. So they're equal strength. They're actually pretty good axles. They put them in trucks all the way up through the 90s. There is one main difference though, that being that the rear end that's in the Nova right now is a mono leaf. And this one here that I picked up is a multi leaf. But luckily, this axle actually has the springs with it, which makes it a pretty easy swap. We're just gonna swap the axle and the springs and all that stuff all at once, and it should go in pretty easy. Okay, get our first glimpse inside of this thing. Boy, it looks pretty clean in there, actually. Ooh. You know what, why take the springs off? Just leave them. So it would have been super sweet if Brandon was here to help me gorilla this thing up there, but uh, he's not, so I had to improvise. Seems a little sketchier than I thought it'd be. <laughs> Shit. The first thing you do is you pull this little bolt off of the pin that holds the spider gears in, drop the pin out, then you can push the axles in a little bit with the pin out of the way, then you can pull the C-clips off and then slide the axles out. And then we're also gonna put a mini spool in here to replace these spider gears while we're at it so we can do two wheel burnouts. Once you have this pin and the axles out of here, you just rotate these and they'll just fall right out. And then these can come out of there as well. And then these spider gears will all get replaced with the mini spool. Okay, so now let's pull the caps. Then you gotta find a place to pry off of. You did not wanna pry off of the teeth. <laughs> Even though nobody will probably ever want this gear set, it's just bad practice. Okay, so now we can drop the pinion out. Leaving the springs on here is actually really coming in handy because I can leverage the pipe wrench against them. So basically for any particular axle, the ring gear is always going to be the same diameter. So like a Ford 9 inch, the reason they call it a 9 inch is because the ring gear is always 9 inches in diameter. This is an 8.5 inch GM 10 bolt, which is much better than the 8.2 inch GM 10 bolt. In fact, the 8.5 inch 10 bolt uses the exact same pinion as a 12 bolt. What they do when you change a gear ratio is the ring gear thickness changes to compensate for the size of the pinion because the tooth count on the pinion changes. So like on this one, since we're going with a lower gear ratio, meaning higher numerically, this ring gear will get thicker to compensate for the smaller diameter pinion. And the reason that a 411 gear set is lower than like a 273 gear set is because your wheels will spin slower relative to the 273 gear set. There it is, one ring gear removed. So the ring gear was a super tight fit on the carrier. So we've had the carrier sitting in the fridge for a few hours and we've had the ring gear sitting on top of the wood stove. And now we're gonna see if we can just get them to slide on real nice. Not with my bare hands though. <laughs> Perfect. One ring gear. There she goes. All right, so now I think we're down to just knocking the carrier bearings off, and then we can put the new ones on and start setting up some gears here. I mean, that's kind of sketchy. Pretty, pretty sketchy. I mean, 
Mm, try it, see what happens. As long as what happens doesn't kill us, we, yeah. you know. Yeah, probably not gonna kill you, but it may not feel good. Just like butter. Man, whoever would have thought that having, you know, good tools actually works really nice. <laughs> not used to this. There we go. Thank you. So I'm popping the old bearing off the pinion so that I can get the shims out of here and measure them to have a good starting point for the new pinion. So what we're doing on the pinion is we're going to make our own set of dummy bearings because obviously this is a pressed fit and the more times you press a bearing on and off of this, the more it wears just a little bit every time to eventually where it's not even a press fit anymore and trying to get the bearing off of this there's a pretty high probability you're either gonna wreck the bearing or the shims underneath. So we're gonna make a set of dummy bearings by taking this guy right here and just kind of hollowing out the inside of the bearing and it's gonna turn out just perfectly. And now here we have a perfectly machined surface. And I would expect no less than all of you to be frowning on this heavily. So we just put the pinion in for the first time with our dummy bearings. And just to check and see where we're at, I'm just gonna use the factory preload shims on the carrier and see what it looks like right now. We're probably gonna have to make some adjustments as you always do, but give us an idea of where we're at. This isn't exactly a sanitary method. No, <laughs> it's not. I mean, you're only gonna be doing 100 and something miles an hour, so. That's the left hand. I know because I marked it and the one on the right is orange. Whenever you check it, you always want to torque the caps down to the actual torque spec that they're supposed to be at because that'll change things. So we're too, too much. We got to... I need to go in. So we know we've got too much backlash, but we're going to check our pattern here anyway just to see if what we need to do is bring the pinion in or if we need to shift the carrier over. We're really hoping that we just need to bring the pinion in like five thousandths, but this will kind of give us another indicator on, on whether that's the case or not. You wanna make sure and get this stuff on the entire tooth, otherwise you're not gonna know what it's telling you. you normally do about three teeth, and then I'll just kind of put some pressure on it. Coast side don't look bad. Yeah. But your drive side is in on the in, inside a little bit. Yeah, and if we yeah. just bring the pinion in, bring it in that'll, that'll pull that back a little bit, won't it? Shit, this may be easy. And if we're wrong, then... Take it back apart. <laughs> so, surprise, surprise. Uh, we thought we needed to bring the pinion in, and that was exactly the opposite of what we needed to do. So, we've had this thing torn apart probably about seven or eight times now, pulling the carrier back out, pulling the pinion back out, reshimming the pinion, reshimming the carrier. And finally, we've got it to where the backlash is good, right within spec, and our pattern is good. But it's like 10 o'clock right now, so we're gonna call it a night and uh, hit this thing tomorrow and put the bearings on that it's gonna have when it's all done and get this thing put in the car at some point. So obviously the correct way to set your pinion depth is to actually use a pinion depth measuring tool. But those are a little expensive and we don't have one, so we just kind of did it the old fashioned way. The one downside to using dummy bearings like we have is there can be small variations in the thickness of the bearings between the dummy bearings that we made and the ones that are gonna get pressed on here in final assembly. So hopefully they're like spot on, there won't be any difference, but once we get it all in there with the final assembled bearings, we're gonna check the backlash and the pattern again just to make sure everything's good. And even if it's not, we're probably just gonna ignore it and act like it is because I'm not gonna press the bearing back off. So there you go. And then this is our new pressed fit bearing that we're gonna go throw in the press and press on right now. Okay, crush sleeve. So when you're setting your pinion preload, it's really important not to go too far with it because once that crush sleeve is crushed, that's it, you can't back it off. Oh, and they are a mother. Oh, holy crap. More leverage.
Now I'm sure you'll all be surprised to hear that I am not using the proper tool for this, but torque is torque, right? So the nice thing about an axle like this where the shims are on the outside of the bearings is that you don't have to press these bearings on and off the carrier to swap shims. The downside is when you're trying to put the carrier in, you have to somehow hold the shims in place in the housing and hold the bearing races on the carrier and everything while you put it together. So you kind of got to hold your tongue in just the right spot and tip these bearing races in a little bit to get it to start. And then once you start getting it started there, you can tap these races with some brass to get them to start straightening out. Okay. All right, now time to install the mini spool. So we did a little bit of research and it turns out it's actually pretty common for the C-clips to not fit into a mini spool. And what you do is you have to grind little flat spots in the sides of it so that it'll slide right through these little notches just perfectly. Now you go in. <laughs> okay, let me slide that axle back so that we can slide the pin and line it down, hopefully through all this stuff nice and easy. Yeah, baby, we got posi. Mm -hmm. 411 gears, posi. What more do you want? Yeah. Shit, now we just got to put the cover on and it's ready to go in the car. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. So since the tires are out of here right now, this would be a great opportunity to take care of this wheel flange. <laughs> oh, it's already so messed up. I really don't feel bad about using this big of a hammer at all. And this is the passenger side wheel flange. So nothing to worry about. Now we'll have plenty of tire clearance. Pretty sweet having the tires off because you can get the driveline bolts pulled off without having to get under the car. You know, the rubber caked on the fenders is a pretty good look for this thing. Yeah, I think so. Now we'll be able to even it out and get some on this side. <laughs> Maybe fill in the rust holes with rubber. Yeah. <laughs> On there, huh? Yeah, yeah, I don't think these have ever came off. All right, so basically what's going on here is we wanted to just swap the springs and everything so that we wouldn't have to modify where the springs go into the axle by putting a kit in and all that stuff. Not that big of a deal, but we figured it'd be a lot easier to just swap everything over. Unfortunately, the bolt that goes through the leaf spring here though is blocked off by the rear subframe right here. So you can't get this bolt out and then the bolts that go through this plate go up through the floor and the retainer inside I think broke and now the nuts just spinning in there. And so we can't really get these off unless we cut a bunch of holes in the floor and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is just knock these springs off and try to reuse the monoleafs that are already in the car and then make our own adapter plate to go up into here to take the place of all the leaf packs that are in here. There we go. Interrupt the little catalyst. Ooh, we are very low on catalyst. I know. How are we supposed to tap any threads without any catalyst? I know, man. <laughs> we're, we're not gonna be able to. We're, we'd have to use something uh, inappropriate like thread cutting oil. Bitches are smoking. There you go. Just gotta work that catalyst in there. <laughs> <laughs> this will really get people going. Use a, use a cell phone light. <laughs> yeah, use your cell phone light. Oh! <laughs> yeah. There it goes. Okay. Yeah! Yeah, yeah. So these do fit in the hole here. Yeah. But really, let's, I think these might work. I think we can make them work. Yeah, I think so. So if we take the block here, this will slide into there. 
like that. And then the rubber, this little thing should squeeze into there. And then this will go back around the spring the way it was. Now, hopefully the centering pins on the mono leafs are the same as these. That's the only, I thought I've read something though, that something was different, but there it goes. There she blows. Towards me. All right, 273 axle out, four tens in. <laughs> Cool. So here's what we got going on here is this little piece of rubber has a metal sleeve in here for this pin and it's a little bit bigger than the hole in the block that we're going to be using. So we're going to grind this out to just where this chamfered edge is right here and that should give us a centered hole because we're not going any further than the chamfered edge and should make everything slide together. I mean, I'd probably do it. I like this review. This is SS Super Sketch Nova. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Oh, ah! <laughs> Watch the paint! <laughs> yeah, like that. Right there! <laughs> oh, there she goes. There it goes. <laughs> Come in, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like that. Seems like it ought to work, huh? This just might work. It might. Oh. But. What? Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, never mind. Okay. I'm smoking crack. Well, that's a good thing then. <laughs> Stay on the crack because I didn't want the alternative. <laughs> you put oil in the Marin? Oh yeah, better do that. <laughs> <laughs> it might be important. Do we have any gear oil? Uh, I don't think so. Well, we can just drive the Nova down to the parts store and pick some up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's a good way to break in a brand new set of gears. <laughs> Pumping. All right, holding. Yeah, we got fluid already. That's good. Uh, all right, then. Throw the tires on. Party time. We're partying. Okay, aside from that little snafu with the springs earlier, everything's gone pretty good. So now we just got to take it out for a little cruise. To break in the gears, you're supposed to drive it for about 15 minutes or so to get the gears up to operating temp. Then you come back, let it cool off completely. And then you're supposed to drive it around gingerly for like a couple hundred miles before you do any towing or heavy pulls or anything like that. We are not going to be driving it for a couple hundred miles before we go to the drag strip with it. However, we are going to do the first part of that. <laughs> that bar, your window roller? Thanks. Don't lose it, it's the only one. <laughs> you know, the only way to ride the Nova is with your R valve. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Feel a little better letting the clutch out? Yeah. They gotta ride the shit out of it? Yeah, way better. Nah, that's not the rear end making that noise, is it? Doesn't normally drag the headers through here. That doesn't sound right. That sounds like it's coming from the back corner. I don't know, you wanna take it back up to the shop and see what it is? Yeah. Whoa! Oh. That's gotta be something. No, I think you hit the header that time. Did I? You're backing up and you hit the header flange, backing up. does not sound very good. Uh. So we made it a little way down the driveway, but there is a horrific clunking sound coming from the back end of this thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with the gears or anything. I think that what happened was the brake shoe that had a crack in it probably snapped off of there and now it's tumbling around in there, but we'll see. Hopefully that's what it is. No, I thought maybe this broke off of there, but it didn't. So we pulled the cover off the axle and aside from finding a bunch of foamy crap here, 
Uh, everything looked normal. The gears looked great. Um, so we're going to slap it all back together. It may have just been some noise from the mini spool. And Brandon also thinks, and I kind of agree, that maybe as the axle was shifting around, the U-bolts, if they were on there crooked when we tightened them, maybe they were shifting back into place and they would have let out some pops too if they were doing that. So we'll put it back together and then uh, have to take it for a test drive in the daylight. So here we are the next day to see if we can get some heat into this axle finally. You know, maybe it was just the headers, because you can see where we were dragging them oh, there. All over the place. Yeah, you know, we were dragging them everywhere. It seemed like we didn't used to drag them through all these little spots before, but... Maybe I should kind of turn a little bit over there and you want to watch and kind of see. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's head over there. I need to break the gears in backwards anyway, you know? Oh. What's it doing? Holy shit. It's sliding the hole. Do that again. Oh, fuck. Okay, well, uh, that would certainly explain the clunking noises. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess we'll limp it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm certainly glad I didn't try racing it like that. Uh, Whew. So now we're kind of back to square one. Yeah, because those springs have to come out now. It's too bad we didn't know about that sooner. <laughs> Hopefully she makes it back without the axle falling out. Uh, you probably haven't been riding around on it like that, but you, it would have been hard to know because you had a, it was open before. Yeah. So you never really had that kind of pressure on it. Yeah, now it does have that kind of pressure yeah. on it. Well, sometimes you beat the car, and sometimes the car, well, it beats you. And today, the car beat us. Unfortunately, it's just not going to be ready to race. We are going to race the red truck, though, because it sounds like a lot of people are disappointed that we didn't do that on the last episode. So we're going to do that on this one, since we can't take the Nova. Well, that was the plan, and then it started to rain, so the test and tune was canceled. Despite our best efforts to bring you some sort of a payoff, as the fates would have it, this episode was just destined to be a big, fat goose egg. But the way I look at it, in life, the highs wouldn't be so high without the lows being so low. So we'll take the bruises on this one and walk away with our heads held high, knowing that when we do get the Nova back out on the track, it'll be just that much sweeter. Not Rod. More like not mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you haven't blown up the axle in your stud yet, so yeah. we should be fine. It's only also gone about 10 feet. <laughs> kind of down to the last of the catalyst here. 
Running low on catalyst, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you have anything you'd like to add? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you covered it. <laughs> I don't know where my lid went. Well, I'll just spray some penetrating catalyst down it. <laughs> what? You can't do that! <laughs>